I'm Andrew Huberman, and I'm a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine. This podcast is separate from my teaching and research roles at Stanford. It is, however, part of my desire and effort to bring zero cost to consumer information about science and science-related tools to the general public. If your visual behavior isn't right, and I do believe we should always start with behaviors and then think about nutrition, supplementation, etc. If your behaviors around vision aren't right, you cannot expect to have good, healthy eyesight for a long time, meaning throughout your lifespan. And if your vision is already poor, many of these things that I'm talking about today, perhaps all of them, will improve your vision to some degree. And if your vision is starting to go, then doing these behaviors is likely to really enhance the quality of the vision that you will build and maintain over time. And all of these are essentially zero cost. Your eyes, in particular, your neural retinas are part of your central nervous system. They are part of your brain. They're the only part of your brain that sits outside the cranial vault. In other words, you have two pieces of your brain that deliberately got squeezed out of the skull during development and placed in these things we call eye sockets. The eye can dynamically adjust where light lands by moving the lens and changing the shape of the lens in your eye through a process called accommodation. These days, we're spending a lot of time looking at things, mainly our phones up close and computers up close, and we are indoors. If you are a young person, and even if you are 25 or older, and you are spending a lot of time looking at things up close, and you are not allowing your vision to relax, in other words, you are not giving your lens the opportunity to flatten out and for these muscles to relieve themselves of this work. You may or may not have migraine headaches. You may or may not have headaches. You might, and that could be the cause of those. But you are also training your eyes to be good at looking at things up close and not far away. And as a consequence, you are reshaping the neural circuitry in your brain and it is not good it is not healthy to only look at things up close green you need to go to a window you need to look out at a distance ideally you would even open the window because those windows actually filter out a lot of the blue light that you want during the daytime a lot of the sunlight it's actually 50 times less gets through You want to get out onto a balcony. You want to relax your eyes and look out at the horizon. You want to go into what's called panoramic vision, let your vision expand. You want this lens mechanism to be very elastic. You don't want it to get stuck in that configuration of looking at things up close. Accommodation is a wonderful feature of your visual system, but you don't want to push that too hard, too often, or for too long. You want to view the horizon. You want to get outside, not just to lighten the load on your mind or to think about other things, but to maintain the health of your visual system. In other words, you want to exercise these muscles and that involves both the lens moving and getting kind of thicker and relaxing that lens. And the relaxation of the lens is actually one of the best things you can do for the musculature of the inner eye. So what's the protocol? How often should you do this? You might be surprised, but for every 30 minutes of focused work, you probably want to look up every once in a while and just try and relax your face and eye muscles, including your jaw muscles, because all these things are closely linked in the brainstem and allow your eyes to go into so-called panoramic vision where you're just not really focusing on anything and then refocus on your work. Many people are experiencing severe vision problems have sleep problems because they're not viewing sunlight early in the day, viewing light, even a very low intensity between the hours of 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. is extremely detrimental to the dopamine and other mood producing systems of the brain. It can negatively impact learning and immunity and even blood sugar. It is likely distorting these lens accommodation mechanism in the eye and leading to myopia in some cases. You know, at least according to the articles they described as this epidemic of myopia can largely be dealt with by getting outside, going into panoramic vision, experiencing some distanced vision, look at things off in the horizon. If you're walking or hiking or biking, not looking at your phone the whole time that you're doing that. If you're at the bus stop or you're uh, commuting, certainly not looking at your phone the entire time you're doing that. 
So I'm not telling people to get away from their phone and their computers. I spend a lot of time staring at a page, drawing, writing, texting, etc., just like you do. But we're really talking about some very simple protocols that aren't just designed to improve your sleep, but are really designed to bolster and enhance your vision. Now, our visual system is exquisitely tuned to motion not just our self-generated motion, but the motion of things around us. And one of the things that it does is something called smooth pursuit. Smooth pursuit is our ability to track individual objects moving, as the name suggests, smoothly through space in various trajectories. You can actually train or improve your vision by looking at smooth pursuit stimuli. You can actually take a few minutes each day, or maybe if you don't do it each day, you could do every third day or so, and actually just visually track a ball. Sometimes it's moving in in kind of an infinity symbol. Sometimes it's more of a sawtooth. Sometimes it's changing speed. Sometimes the uh, the cue that you're following, the little target, is um, dilating and contracting. This is going to keep the extraocular muscles conditioned and strong and allow you to have a healthy, smooth pursuit system. Remember, the brain follows the eye. It follows the movements of the eye. It has to deal with that. And the neural circuits within the brain have to cope with changes in smooth pursuit. So if you're doing a lot of reading up close, you're not viewing horizons, you're not getting a lot of smooth pursuit type stimulation from your life, or you're just getting it within the confines of a little box on your phone, like your your smooth pursuit is over, you know, millimeters or what we, we, we always talk in terms of visual angle, but the amount of degrees of visual angle. But if you're just looking at smooth pursuit in this little tiny box on your phone or on your computer screen, and you're not looking at objects in your environment like swooping birds and things like that, which I'm guessing many of you are not spending your time doing, well, these mechanisms for smooth pursuit will get worse over time. Your vision will get worse. And so while I prefer that people get out into the real world and experience smooth pursuit tracking of visual objects or i guess this is a good reason to watch live sports if that's your thing or to watch a tennis match hitting watching the ball go back and forth whatever watching kids play it doesn't really matter the other one is to train accommodation so spending a few minutes you might even just do this for two minutes of looking at something up close that's going to activate these accommodation mechanisms and then moving it at arm's length and focusing on it for 5, 10 seconds, maybe more, maybe uh, 15 or 20 seconds, then slowly moving it into a location and then out. This is actually a lot like the visual training that's done post-concussion to try and repair, actually repair some of the balance and motor and visual and cognitive aspects of the brain. Practice accommodation for a few minutes, maybe every other day. Just bring something in close. You'll feel the strain of your eyes doing that. I can feel it right now. Move it out. You'll feel a relaxation point. Move it past that relaxation point where you will have to do what's called a virgin side movement to maintain focus on that location as it moves out. Bring it back in. Well, depending on your interpupillary distance, the point at which things get blurry and cross-eyed will vary. But for me, you know, as I get about about six inches from my nose, it's really hard. I can't accommodate any longer. I move it out another inch and everything's in nice focus. You know, two, two to three, maybe five minutes. Just practice that. Practice accommodation and then be sure to give your eyes some rest. Get outside, look at a horizon or do nothing. Just kind of let your eyes go soft. You don't have to be neurotic about this, but you, if you do this often enough, meaning every other day, every third day or so, you can be the strange person on the plane or in the classroom doing this. You know, that people might chuckle or look at you funny or, or tease you, but that's okay because uh, you'll be able to see when they are um, losing their vision. Uh, so you'll get the last laugh. It's worth doing. It's really worth preserving your vision. And again, if you're a young person, this is great because then you can actually build an extra strong visual system using all the tools that we're describing.